All right. Hey, everyone. Um, today, I guess I'm taking over uh, Kianga's spot. Uh, I'm Mike from Abundance Protocol, part of uh, AcreDAO's um, collaborating uh, together. And uh, today, I'm going to talk about stability scope. And if you had a chance um, either to read the article that uh, I posted a bit earlier in the week, uh, or over the weekend, I'm going to post it here. Also, just in case if you want to take uh, kind of read along. And so I'm going to kind of start. Um, how should I say this? Um, I'm going to guess do a little of a rambling introduction uh, of this article. Uh, and then I hope to kind of open it to a broader discussion. Um, and not just about the article, but kind of about the stability scope and also about um, our role as an AVC and how we can um, kind of formulate guiding principles maybe for um, regener regenerative finance and you know how we can support the public good more broadly within Maker. Um, so I'll start with the article, um, and the purpose of this article was really uh, because we talked about um, gate, you know, the um, this idea of makers, governance, AI tools, and how those can support uh, the overall ecosystem and how they can um, kind of, you know, in the process of the end game, how do we uh, bring people together that people who don't know much about um, maker and how it works how we um, kind of bring those people to be able to um, be effective and uh, within Maker and be able to kind of quickly um, get to um, to be able to participate effectively and to be able to uh, kind of maximize their impact within the protocol. Um, so we talked a lot previously in previous weeks about how this process works, about you know how these tools can be developed, uh, and what's the purpose of you know the, these AI tools. But um, I kind of want to take a step back and think about uh, not just the tools themselves, but really how um, the development process of these tools and uh, why that's important. It's really about how do we make sure that what we build um, maximizes impact, maximizes the public good? And part of it is about how we build, not just what we build. And the idea is that um, if we want, uh, if we look at AI in general today, and I don't know how much uh, you pay attention to this and like the discussion online about uh, AI alignment and, you know, the kind of coming problems with it, like what we can expect in the next few years, uh, what would happen if we have like AGI, this, you know, artificial general intelligence that is at some point uh, could be a lot more um, capable than, you know, humanity. And then what would happen at that point um, if, if this system is not aligned with um, like human principles, with human ethics, um, what's the process of dealing with that? And there's a lot of discussions like, oh, we don't need to worry about it. Everything will be fine. On the other hand, you have people say, you know, this is the end of the world. Um, my approach is really to, uh, I'm just, I'm looking at what Kianga is writing, not following the discussion especially closely, but uh, keen to understand the discourse. Uh, so I cannot, so first of all, just a bit of you know a background on myself i you know i cannot say i know i'm not in the ai development you know i'm not an ai developer but you know i read uh the discourse i kind of uh i'm more on the side of um the dynamics system dynamics that's kind of my focus like game theory system dynamics economics um and how all these inter are interrelated with technology so that's kind of my background um, and when I look at AI development, uh, one of the issue, it, issues that we see is 
Right now, the most powerful systems uh, like ChatGPT are proprietary, which basically means we don't really know how it's built. Um, we know it works pretty well. Uh, you know, the development keeps improving, but we don't have access to the code. And one of the reasons we don't uh, is because, you know, if if you do have access, it's not easy to monetize it. Uh, if anyone can build the system, it's, you know, they have an incentive to provide as little information as possible. Uh, and that's how like Web 2, how all these systems work. Uh, but we're, you know, Web 3, we want to kind of uh, create a whole different system. That's our um, kind of, you know, what we're going with. Um, so going back to that, that idea that, you know, how do we build a system that's consistent with transparency, that's consistent with um, aligning interests, aligning incentives, and in how we create these systems, and how all that is related to what we what we do at Maker, um, and you know, building Gate. And as I wrote in the article, basically through this process of building AI tools for Maker we can contribute to this broad conversation about AI alignment uh, in general. And we have these systems like ChatGPT that are, you know, billions of dollars um, of, you know, revenues going to there, like investment of 10, probably tens of billions of dollars at this point and building all these AI data centers and so on. So, you know, we at the moment cannot compete with that. And the question is, what can we contribute to this conversation of AI alignment, uh, given our limited um, ability, limited scope, and so on? And really, what I wanted to uh, kind of present as uh, a thought experiment is not just AI, but if you look about any kind of uh, government, any system where you have um, like a government, for example, that is responsible for representing the interests of people. Uh, what happens if the money uh, to, to fund the government, but also you know to fund government activity, uh, comes from some other source than you know the people themselves? Uh, if it comes from some industry, if it comes from you know oil or whatever, um, that in itself creates misalignment. Um, which basically says that when the government has to think about how do we um, get money to fund ourselves to be able to work um, versus what do we do to uh, improve the interests or to promote the interests of the people when the, the money that funds the system and when the and what the system is supposed to do, when those two misalign, then there's a problem. Um, and it could be like extreme problem to the point where, you know, government is completely corrupt, but also even if the government really wants to really represent the interests of the people, there is still conflict there. Um, and when we look at what we're building and in general, uh, how AI is built, uh, and I'll even start with like ChatGPT, for example, um, their money comes from well, from subscribers, let's say. Uh, it's like $20 a month or so on. And the the issue there is, well, you're not really building something for the public interest. You're building something for a specific group of subscribers. And then the rest, you don't really care if they benefit from it or not. Um, and, you know, this, we're kind of just getting started with this process, but you can definitely see that maybe a few years down the road, they'll think, uh, you know, maybe $20 is good for like, you know, small, small, you know, individuals. Mm -hmm. But if it's a company, how about we charge $10,000 or whatever it is? And you, it's probably going to be very similar to the dynamics to what we have in Web2, uh, which is this attention economy, this economy that's not based on, um, you know, the public good good, but it's based on something else. Like it's the attention economy. And we already see the issues there. And if we have the same issues with um, AI, it's, you know, it gonna, it's going to take it to the next level. Like the, all the, the problems are going to be at the next level. Um, 
you know, going to have kind of social conflict. You're going to have um, misalignment between, uh, you know, pe people's interests and the interests of like corporations and AI and so on. So, for that reason, um, it, it's important, I believe, to focus on not just building this, um, you know, governance tools for Maker, but thinking about how do we build them in a way that shows showcases what crypto and what maker can do um, to align the interests of the community and uh, the tool that we're building to benefit the community. Uh, so basically the developers who actually build this tool, how do we align their incentives with the incentives of the community? And one idea that I'm presenting or the main idea I'm presenting is that um, the money has to come from the community but more importantly, it's not just that it comes from the community, but it's that every person in the community has to have a stake in the system. Um, so, you know, depends on how much, you know, invested you are in the community. And, you know, it's like a tokenless community. Uh, if you have more at stake, um, you should be kind of contributing more toward the development of the system with the idea that, um, you know, the system is supposed to benefit the whole ecosystem, which means that if you uh, contribute more, you're still expect, you still expect to get even more from the system than whatever it is you're contributing. Otherwise, there's no point in even having this system. Like, why would you contribute to something that's going to uh, make the system less uh, than what it is now? Uh, and that's the idea that if, so the idea is of basically token inflation, that if, um, the developers get money through token inflation. Inflation obviously devalues, uh, you know, the token, which means that everyone is interested in making sure that the system works. Because if it doesn't, then basically they're losing money. And since no one wants to lose money, they want the system to work. Therefore, they want um, kind of the best developers to work on it. They want to um make sure that whatever they're doing uh as rune was writing uh for example it's not just the development of the system but we have to kind of you know the way um we write posts or whatever has to have to be in this format that the system can read uh, so that's the idea that once there's alignment between people and uh developers then um the developers have the interest to build the system uh, based on the community's um, priorities. And, you know, just to take a step back, you know, the idea is that if we can show that this um, idea works on a small scale, like in the sub DAO, I'm not saying that, you know, Maker as a whole has to do it, but this is something that we can experiment with. If we can demonstrate that something like that uh, works on a small scale, then we can contribute to the broad discussion of you know maybe maybe proprietary AI is not the best solution, but actually you can have these open source AIs that actually you can fund them through the community, but it still benefits the community. Um, is your view that financial incentives in terms of payment in the native subdao token create the necessary alignment? Um, yes, payment, but more uh, specifically payment through this token inflation. Um, that, you know, I actually mentioned it in the article that if in the sub if you only have, if you pay um, developers through, um, if, if there is like a treasury, it's not the same because a treasury is just like money that the community maybe has, but it doesn't affect every single individual uh, proportionate to uh, what they're invested in. It's kind of like just a separate thing. Like it's almost a psychological um you know, perspective. And just to point out, like, um, can you define token inflation as you're using it? Um, so very basic, um, you know, if we look at um, Bitcoin or Ethereum or any system, um, token inflation just means that, you know, you kind of just mint new tokens, uh, which means you have more tokens in circulation. Um, and the value of the token is obviously determined by supply and demand. Um, so if even though you print more tokens in, in Bitcoin, you know, it's still value, valid right now. It's, you know, 
over 30,000, not at what it was when it was created, which is like a few cents. Um, in the third to last paragraph, what do you mean or can you expand on current um, currency risks? Mentioned to me, taint, um, let me see, currency risks. Um, I don't remember saying, mentioning. Um, can you be more specific? Which paragraph? The last paragraph. Um, these questions certainly need to be resolved, and yet we can already see how such a design uh, can have far-reaching implications beyond Maker. It can serve as a prototype to developer, developing user and community-centric open-source AI models that are self-sustainable, don't require external funding, models that, when built at scale, um, so the design would ensure that uh, community stays engaged in front of, uh, of the system as in success. This design would also require currency. Oh, sinks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, currency sinks basically means, for example, in Ethereum. Um, in so, for example, in Ethereum, you know, you have uh, with every transaction, um, you know, you burn uh, some tokens and that's what a, like a sink is basically that money uh, comes out of the circulation that you don't want kind of runaway inflation you don't want to just print money where um, you don't want to print money where nothing uh, is kind of additional stuff is produced like if the economy grows then it's okay uh, to you know maybe print additional tokens but if you're just maintaining the same size uh, of the economy then you want uh, you know the tokens not to to grow you want like uh, like a fixed amount so that's the idea um yeah so so basically what i'm trying to say in this article i'm not kind of i'm not trying to dictate um uh an idea or something but i'd rather kind of have a discussion about it and not just specifically on this um on like ai but kind of more broadly of how do we think about our role um, as an AVC? How do we think about um, what we do in terms of um, public goods and maker? And that's kind of on the broadest level. Um, and this article is basically kind of focusing on AI, but thinking about that as like how do we think let's say specifically in a with uh gate how do we think about um broadening our impact on the overall ecosystem by how we build things uh so how we build ai how do we uh, make that process as impactful as possible on the broader ecosystem and the example that i'm providing is that well we can build what we need to build anyway uh but in a way that can have kind of broader um, implications for AI development. Um, how you determine my, milestones for AI capacity um, capability? So, for so again, um, just speaking broadly, let's say um, the AI can only uh, kind of read, um, you know, the Atlas documents, and then based on that, just output uh, for any question you provide specifically uh, what uh, you know what data says about uh, any specific topic so that may be like um, you know one type of, of capability but um, another would be like if you're and you know that's been discussed uh, before basically if someone wants to propose uh, something some you know policy or whatever it is for or maker, uh, you know, that seems to be like a more advanced capability if the AI can say, yes, this is consistent, yes, this is inconsistent. So just for, you know, so basically just being able to read the rules versus being able to apply it more broadly, like to me, that says a difference in capability. Uh, but again, this is kind of, you know, general uh, thinking and, you know, I'm not trying to dictate what it is, but rather I'm thinking that um, we as a community can, or a sub -DAO, not even us, like whatever is the sub -DAO that runs the, uh, this AI and develops it, they can set the goals themselves. And then 
um, you know, work from there. If AI goes rogue, you want to punish developers. Um, penalize payments of devs. Um, if I want to penalize it, well, I would say that this is, again, something that the community can set up. Um, you know, for example, maybe you need to test the AI uh, thoroughly before any next step is released. And then like, if they don't do that, then yes, you penalize them. Uh, but again, I'm just saying that things need to be kind of, uh, you don't want kind of vague rules. You want to be able to say, this is what you need to do. Uh, this is the process. If you follow this, you get uh, this much payment. If you don't follow it, you know, maybe you're going to get a penalty and so on. Um, and the idea is that like, I don't want us to make these decisions. I want when you have a sub DAO for them to be able to uh, make those decisions. If that makes sense. Um, so again, you know, of we already had uh, a few questions, but I do want to kind of open the discussion more broadly uh, and not just to AI. I want to um, get your <laughs> uh, get your input uh, in general. What what do you think about um, an idea like that in terms of uh, what we do as an AVC? Like, is this consistent? Uh, do you believe with uh, our mission? And um, also, kind of thinking about like what our mission can be as like how do we um you know how do we think about our mission in terms of um you know how do we kind of maximize uh impact how do we maximize this regenerative uh system within maker so if you want to comment in the chat or if you want to come off um mute either way will be good milestones take time if devs don't deliver they don't get paid um well you can have smaller milestones uh i guess it really depends um on how how the process is set up um obviously you know if you have like some kind of bigger developer they don't mind not getting paid for you know maybe a month or two or whatever it is, but, you know, the community can always set up like smaller mi milestones, maybe like, you know, two week increments or something like that um, and see the process progress from there. So it really depends. And again, it's something that the community can, the sub DAO can uh, determine. How maker token people verify achievements? Um, so again, it's up to the community. And this is not just for AI. I think this can be um, applicable more broadly, um, like to any kind of develop development, like the community can set up specific goals. And, you know, the more kind of specific it is, the, the easier it is uh, to see if the goal is met or not. Uh, can you say more about what it looks like to support public goods AI development? We understand Rune now believes it's not feasible for Maker to fund its own AI uh, capacity. Um, support public goods AI development. So again, um, uh, maybe milestones can be adjusted if there's uh, challenges in, the, in delivery. Yes, that's so. Let me just kind of start from the end. Um, yes, so again, this is something. So, so what I'm presenting, you know, with this concept is um, something that a sub DAO can adopt. And then, you know, I'm not saying this is like the perfect system. I'm saying like, and I'm actually, I'm literally saying like in the 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 paragraph before the last that there's still a lot of things to hammer out there uh but it's like a start of a way of looking at um you know of of development of you know if you do it based on this system maybe it's easier to align the interests and then uh you can develop the system uh not the system but develop the sub dao in a way that um you know builds on that um so yes if the, the sub DAO can say, well, these are our milestones. 
uh, but they can be even more specific. Like if this is not met with it within this time, this is what happens. Maybe there's a penalty. Maybe there's uh, less, you know, payment. Or maybe if the development is sped up, you know, you get extra payment. So again, this can all be, you know, you can write it at at nauseum, but <laughs> have like a system that as long as both the community and developers um, agree as long as their consensus there, then um, then you can kind of you know have a system that works. Uh, let me just answer the true name before that. Um, so, uh, can you say more about what it looks like to support public goods? So again, this if if we're just building on top of another system, let's say on top of uh, ChatGPT or whatever it is. Um, we can still make the system um, open source. That's just the very basic, um, you know, idea of how do you make it kind of consistent with public goods. But also, um, you can build it in a way that you know kind of gets the most community input um, or the most um, engagement from the community. And that's also why uh, um, it's preferable that the community has. Um, that the community has uh, more stake in the development because then it's like more of a public good as opposed to something that's just developed externally and then it's like oh great we have this new tool uh, but i really didn't have any input on it because you know i didn't see how it affects me uh, so that's kind of the idea but also not just within the community but you can also think about um, how do we partner with other other um you know protocols how would he, how do we partner with other systems and maybe the payment can also come from like other um you know maybe multiple sub DAOs, maybe multiple uh, stakeholders and kind of build the system from there um that it benefits an ever growing um community or ever or multiple communities that all have a stake in the system and you know that kind of increases the public good um let's see what else do you think we'll need we'll need scope advisors to set and measure this? Um, so I would say that for the most part, it should be done within uh, a sub DAO. I don't think there should be like external people um, reviewing stuff like that. I mean, if if the sub DAO wants it, sure. Um, but I think that you know the system. It, the sub DAO itself can, in itself, make its own decisions on how to develop this thing. Uh, concerns, concerns community may not understand what AI developers are doing enough to engage. Uh, absolutely, that's very true. That's you know usually how it is. Like you don't, you cannot expect everyone uh, to know what uh, developers are doing. But the idea is that if everyone has a stake in the system. Um, if you don't understand something or something like that, everyone still cooperates. Um, so some people know more, some people know less. Uh, but maybe if no one knows, you know, what developers are doing, maybe you, you get some external person. And, and but that's something that the community needs to decide on its own. Um, or maybe they do have a few people in the community that do understand this thing, and then they can kind of defer to them uh, because they all have a stake in this. And everyone, uh, like no one within the community uh, would really, you know, try to, I mean, it's possible that someone would go rogue and uh, kind of, you know, say things that are not true. But, uh, uh, you know, as long as the whole community has an, is invested in this, they would want to figure out uh, what exactly developers are doing and making sure that the process uh, is as transparent as possible. And that's another thing about building it as an open source, as like building it in public, that you don't really have, like no one has to um, hide what they're doing. Like the code would be open, everyone can access it, everyone can see what it is, and then you get as much feedback as possible. Um, some type of feedback loop. Uh, do you think we'll need uh, some kind of feedback loop? Uh, concern, uh, Mike, do you think doing things with open source code is de facto public goods or is there more to it? Um, I think it's a start. I think um, just because it's open source doesn't mean um, it benefits as 
many people as it could. And that's really why um, you need this um, incentive structure in place that would get the most community in, um, involved. Be because when the developers are aligned with the community in what's being developed, then it's not just, you know, it's not just that, oh, this is open source, therefore it must be a public good, but it's actually we're building this thing for the purpose of benefiting the entire community and also, you know, as wide as possible. Because, you know, if the system is built in such a way that you can get more uh, participation from maybe other sub DAOs, maybe other protocols, maybe, you know, in a way that kind of uh, where the feedback loop allows you um, to kind of maximize your impact, um, then, you know, you kind of go to the next level. Then it's not just, oh, this is open source. Therefore, by definition, it's good. Um, yes, open source is probably good. Uh, it's number one public account in the world. Uniswap tool. Yeah, build it. Yeah. So I, uh, if I see, could set policy about what kind of people sub DAOs should try to attract as active community members. So they're necessary capabilities to engage with core governance and FS improvements. Um, no, no, no specific uh, comment on that. Um, I think we, I guess we could um, advise on that, um, but I also think we can advise kind of on a broader, uh, even broader strategy uh, of, um, you know, how to promote public goods also. Uh, need first app with 100 million user. What this, is this related to Uniswap or? Also, if anyone wants to come off the mic, Kianga, you, you can definitely do that. Anyone else? Hey, Mike, this is Robin here. Hey. I think like one of the things maybe we should do as a group is finalize the use cases on which we want to work on, mm -hmm. right? Which we want to create solutions. For example, like AI could be used like for a lot of things like onboarding and education searchability mm -hmm. and discovery of the information like on-chain analytics and all financial reporting proposal vetting and all so like mm -hmm. there are there would be different models that will be used for these and different tools mm -hmm. in some cases like the default models that we'll be using would be already open source right mm -hmm. in some cases we might have to go for closed models just because the availability right like we do like there are a lot of open AI models, like there are a lot, a lot of AI models, but right now they all have limited access, right? Like means like how, how many tokens, like in terms of LM, LLMs and all, in terms of what functionality can you use? So I think it would be good to start from like the use case side also, that what are we planning to develop and then work towards, okay, like for these use cases, what are the models we use? Mm -hmm. What do we develop and then see, okay, what falls under open source, what doesn't fall under open source and all. Right. I, I agree. I mean, you, you have to kind of start with where you are and what's available. Um, and I definitely agree with that. And I also think that, you know, part of the idea is that you build what the community wants, you build what the community needs um, and based on the community's priorities. Um, and if you start from there, then you can tackle, let's say, whatever is the most, let's say, the top three priorities of the community. Once you, you know, have those um, set up, maybe there'll be milestone one, let's say, you know, get the first priority out the door and then focus on something else or, you know, so it depends, you know, I, I definitely agree with, you know, that it's not just one thing you're building. You're, you know, you have to basically build whatever the community wants. Um, I think crypto is moving away from trading as that's all you could be do traditionally. The new wave of technology allows communication to evolve from digital you know, where blockchains, tokens, and liquidity pools are spawned of identities and you have an internal blockchains with scaling out. Would you agree? 
Um, I don't know if we're moving away from trading. I do think that we have more, um, you know, kind of slowly getting more use cases. I do um, agree with this, like digital identities, uh, that that's slowly picking up. Um, I'm not an expert <laughs> on these things, but you know, that's just my kind of personal opinion. Uh, Mike, is there a possibility that it could lead to short-term reward gaming of the system? Example, community prioritizing uh, immediate milestones over long-term goals. Um, it's definitely possible. Um, and that's also something that I mentioned that uh, you need to build the sub down in a way that, you know, kind of minimizes the potential to game the system. Uh, because what you want in the long term is obviously, you know, token value to increase, let's say. Uh, and to get there, you cannot just, um, what's the word? You cannot, um, you, you cannot, base it on short-term uh, goals. Um, you have to kind of have this long, long-term long vision uh, because otherwise people will see it, you know, it's going to be transparent that, you know, we're just trying to, uh, you know, get immediate goals out, but in the long run, nothing uh, useful is going to come out of it. I feel a bit like that's uh, the story with like the metaverse as a meme that at some point it was a big thing and now no one talks about it, so. It's just my uh, point of view. We need token-based accounts, NFT wallets. Don't disagree. Uh, that might not be so hard with stable coins, actually. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about how Maker connects with this. Um, with this is, I think, crypto is OK. Uh, the whole social, social fine, social tokenist communities like AcreDAOs, I think those groups need a lot of liquidity and alternative market mechanisms, uh, and they're never going to build well themselves or in isolated siloed groups with no network effects. Yes, I agree with that also, actually. Um, and I think the mechanisms are, you know, part of what, what we want to, um, not just us, but in general, we want to promote um kind of thinking about these things we want we want uh you know we we want our system to be attractive to 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 people who want to build out the public good who to want to build out the regenerative aspect um of what crypto can do and i think that's part of it it's like it's not only uh, about trading it's not only about finance um it's about what, how we can benefit the wider ecosystem. And I think all these mechanisms have maybe some economic aspect to it, but also has like far, far broader um, implications. For example, you know, AI alignment, but uh, a lot of other uh, um, directions this can go also. See, people are typing. Anyone else wants to go off of the mic? I think that's quicker than typing, but that's up to you guys. I'm just wondering what what do you guys think uh, uh, kind of overall about um, not even specifically about this article, but uh, kind of this approach of thinking more broadly about what we can do as an AVC and how we can uh, contribute, um, you know, to kind of aligning maker with, um, you know, this more expensive, more broader view of uh, the public good. Like in my in my view, this is kind of our mission overall as an ABC, but I'm kind of wondering what you guys think um, 
if this is a good approach, if this is um, makes sense for you. I know this is maybe a bit different from um, you know previous discussions, but I'm just curious what you guys think. Yeah, Micah, it's um, it is really different from the kinds of things we often talk about in governance at Maker, and it's great. I'm I sort of feel like you're. I have some muscles that have never been exercised. <laughs> um, and just to, to sort of think about and comment on the stability scope and, you know, some of the maybe current debates about how to propose changes or, 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 or where to structurally propose changes and that, you know, moving to this allocator DAO model <clears throat> where eventually there's going to be no more co core vaults mm -hmm. right and um the sub DAOs, the allocator DAOs, will be able to do their own risk assessments and they have a, a you know kind of financial skin in the game given you know their their economic structure um so so it you know that's just sort of a lot to parse Right, and I think what you're raising is 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 important because it it's like the whole design of Endgame, the way I think about it, is recognizing where decisions are kind of best made in a decentralized community. That's um, you know going to be managing a multi-trillion dollar. Say Raphael here, hi, um, you know so you know, 100 million users and, you know, just a gigantic ecosystem that actually can function capably, capable, you know, can function well with security and confidence. And, you know, we're just never going to have the granularity at the core governance level, level to form right. an opinion, right? So, I, I'm kind of rambling a bit because I, I, I'm not sure where this lands, but I do, I just do feel that part of your essay that talks about, you know, where funding for certain things maybe comes directly from sub DAO treasuries and how the budgets work and how that's involved with alignment. And, and then I just want to add that I think the, the public goods focus is actually uh, a carrot, right? I mean, it's it's a it's 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 a value set and a priority that you know Rune has said from the beginning of of explaining the end game, explaining that we need to attract people who care about something bigger than themselves, care about something bigger than just the the zero sum nature of like something that's financially profitable and works, right. So in that sense, what you're pressing us to really start to think about and learn about, like what is public goods? And maybe it's a little bit more than just, oh, it's open source, therefore, you know, our work is done. Mm -hmm. But this is also then going to be really important message to send out so that each of these sub DAOs, you know, they're going to, and I'm a little bit worried about this, right? I mean, we're doing, we're, we're doing, have this whole farming thing. So we know mm -hmm. who that's going to attract. So if right. we've got to get the message out there about the bigger purpose. So that we also attract people who are going to be interested in doing the the difficult work, the you know the the giga brain work of like, how do we? Not only how do we do it, not only what are we going to do, not only how are we going to do it, but like <laughs> a whole philosophy as to why. And you know, there's just so many layers to this um, that I think you know this conversation is just scratching the surface, but it's an important one. Right, I absolutely agree, and I mean, I mean that's kind of my main focus in general. These kind of dynamics, this game theory um, behind the scenes, basically. That um, you know, when we build a system in a certain way, um, how we build it affects the results. Uh, so if you have these, you know, token farming, yes, it attracts. Um, you know, obviously, maybe it attracts some kind, a specific kind of like farmers let's say um, but maybe it also attracts people that will, you know people will be more involved for example so 
the way we structure these things, we need to think through it. Through it, we need to think, um, and we need to experiment. I think that's what's good about this, you know, sub DAO model that, um, you know, you can have different ways of approaching things, and hopefully, we can look at what works, and we can uh, have innovation there um, that, you know, focuses on improving the system, focuses on, you know, improving the dynamics of the system that it's not just about you know oh i'm collecting these tokens but actually wait a minute if we build it this way if we build it in a way that the community is aligned maybe the results are much better maybe you know maybe not uh but just experimenting there um and you know i don't think the that token farming was always there in crypto obviously like i don't know Maybe my my history or my uh, knowledge of Ethereum, for example, doesn't go that far. But I think that's more of a kind of relatively new, maybe that post uh, kind of Uniswap that became big. But before that, I don't think it was that big. I don't know if anyone wants to correct me. I'll be you know more than happy to you know change my perspective. But basically, you know, you see that something is effective. You see that something works and that it generates um, growth. And then you replicate that and you you know tweak it and you improve on it. Um, and I feel that's why we're in this you know farming era. But if we see that something else works much better and not just you know to get a few more tokens, but actually get better results, get like something that works for, for people, works uh, for the community, actually produces a public good, uh, then I think if something works and it's exciting, people would do that. Um, so I feel that that's what we, you know, maybe that's what one of the things that we need to focus on of, you know, what models are there that we can, um, incentivize people to um, produce. Um, like what I propose is just one of these models. It could be a lot other ones. It could be, you know, a lot of improvements uh, within this system. Um, let me just see what in the chat. Uh, one problem is about community knowledge of LMs. Very few have understood this. Uh, what is AI and it's capable of doing? It will be difficult to get community involved in something they don't understand. Yes. Uh, so we, we talk about that um, sometime. Uh, sometimes uh, better to let experts deliver results with minimal community involvement. I say it because you talk about community centric. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that the community um, would have like. There's a lot of things that come like you know. If you go for medicine or whatever it is, like if the community is not, if you don't have doctors there or you don't have like you know scientists or whatever they wouldn't know uh what you know what the science is or what the exactly the medical treatment is but they do know what's their interests and they do know what they want um and that's kind of the point uh of this alignment that you want to align it with the interests and if they know what they want they can get you know, external experts, or they can get people that would represent their interest in this uh, system. So, you know, I don't expect the any commu community to know to have expertise on any subject. I'm just saying that they have an interest, they have a common interest, and based on that, they can figure out a way to, um, you know, to determine if this system actually benefits them or not uh, through those dynamics. Uh, I think the way of how to get to alignment and maximum value creation should be up to the sub DAO. Sub DAO governance can support that at every step. What priorities does the community have? How is that surface? What polling methods are used? Which tools? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's the starting point that um, this is kind of. So the article is just a proposal of like this is a way to think about it. Um, you know the community obviously uh, the sub DAO. You know <laughs> I'm not running a sub DAO, so you know any sub DAO can make their own decisions. This is like a proposal for them. Like this is something to think about. Do you think this makes sense? Do you think this doesn't make sense? Do you think this is something that uh, can be built on? Um, 
minimal community involvement, but we do need to figure out how to have community involvement. The work has to be accountable and transparent and directed by the community. Gate are supposed to help with that. Yes, that, that's also part of that. Uh, doing get, gate uh, analyses is difficult. We can't expect community to recognize uh, what is needed and what needs to be fixed. Um, correct, yes. So again, you know, maybe they get expertise from outside. Maybe um, the important the important point I'm making is that um, they need to, they know their priorities. They need they know their interests. Um, that's kind of where you start. And if the system is built around that, if the development is built around that, then you can get to everything else. Um, yes, community may then need to vet scope it or agree to the criteria, but this seems to be a hard problem, hiring independent experts for unbiased advice. True, <laughs> I'm not saying this is easy. Um, I think we can all walk away from this discussion recognizing the importance of aligning AI development with human interests, or in this case, the best interests of MakerDAO. Absolutely. And also, um, also how what we do can be copied or leveraged by the whole crypto ecosystem or built upon. Yes. Very early for. AI, I don't think the AI community has bad intentions. Also true. Yes, Mike, and also there is a lot to learn from a few other communities, like Optimism has been doing retrofunding grants and all, right? So people who have <laughs> already developed something, they can apply for the project and all. So Gitcoin has like quadratic funding. So <laughs> that's that's. I'm not sure these are not foolproof like these solutions, but they have been effective also to a certain extent. Right? And then right. like a lot of other projects which have RFP type of grants, like you know, Shop is there, Ave is there and all. And then many other projects which have like open grants, right? Like nouns uses it, ENS uses it, they use like prop house as a software to provision their grants and all, which is also good, like everybody in the community knows who is applying for, what are the exact proposals. And these does not have to be like huge amounts, could be like a few thousand dollars and all, right? Helping builders just prove out some work, right? And then like from there, like detail could be built and all, right? Which could be handled at the sub dow level itself. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I totally agree there's like, <laughs> Um, I mean, the idea is that you want to get the best ideas and you want to get, you know, what works. Um, you know, there is, you know, farming that's, I don't know how well it works. It does seem to generate some, uh, interest from some people, um, obviously like quadratic funding, obviously, uh, grants and so on. That's kind of other ways of approaching it. And, I think basically we need to, um, we, I mean, we as an AVC, we need to kind of um, just pre present like our, some kind of guiding principles, like very broad guiding principles that basically say, you know, we want to maximize this thing. We want to maximize the public good. Um, we're not prescribing use this method, use that method, but rather we're, we could say, uh, you know, we believe that this broad approach has to, you know, we need to take a look at it. Like how do we align community interests, let's say with a with maker, but the system itself, yes, we propose as this is an idea, just as something to kind of, you know, to brainstorm on. Um, that's kind of the idea, but obviously there's, a ton of uh, different uh, approaches out there, and we can kind of, you know, sub DAOs by themselves can weigh uh, which approach makes the best, um, you know, what makes the most sense for them. See, Kianga is typing, even though you can also say. Okay. 
anyone else comments, questions, ideas? Definitely is an ABC refi should be looking out for a scope as a way to do not try to dictate everything to a narrow set of ideas. Uh, we should uphold the space for experimentation and something like states versus federal control in the US. Yeah, definitely. Like that's, you know, I, like we're, we advise, we don't, <laughs> we don't dictate. Um, but the question is like, what do we advise, you know, and that's kind of, you know, how do we, what's kind of our broadest maximalist public good stance? That's kind of what, what always guides me, like, how do we maximize uh, the impact? How do we maximize the public good? Yeah, I was also, I was also just referring off of what Rafael was saying, in that, you know, there could be this tendency as we want to improve the scopes, you know, for people to want to really get very granular in the control of, of what happens. And I think something we can do that would be aligned with the refi values is to be very mindful that, that to Raphael's point, you know, we want to be pushing a lot of the decisions about how things should be done and protect the sub -DAOs abilities to have freedom to choose. And so, you know, that's something maybe we can think about for our policy documents so that our, our ADs can be on the lookout for changes that are proposed that might, you know, you try to increase the federal nature of, of the core, right? The power of the core, because we are going to have to figure out, you know, what are these rules that are going to be ossified? And then what are, you know, what are the domains that the sub DAOs are going to get to pick and choose whatever they want to do or service providers they want to use, et cetera. You know, how much experimentation are they allowed to, um, to do? How do we think about, and I think maybe this came up last week in Rune's next gen Atlas call. What, what are the, the line has to be where the mistakes of the sub DAO can negatively harm the, the whole system, right? But that up until that line. Um, so yeah, there's just there's 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 just there's just a lot, but I, I would say that being watchful for very prescribed, broad, rigid rules, you know, that are gonna apply to the sub DAOs. You know, we want to be very careful about that. Right. No, I definitely agree with that. I don't know. Uh, do you think um, that the article I presented is that like not really consistent with that with that uh, vision? Because in my view, I'm just presenting an idea no, I, to I kind of in, brainstorm. Yeah, I don't think it's inconsistent. I don't think it's inconsistent. I I think it's you know pointing us in the right direction <clears throat> because you know I mean it's it's you're just sort of highlighting some of the dynamics and incentives that will occur at the sub DAO level. And, and, you know, that's, we're not used to think, I mean, this is brand new for maker, right? This is brand new, this concept of a federated sort of community that has, right. you know, parts that have their own autonomy, but there's something that's going to be unifying. There's, so there's an, if there's an infrastructure that controls the whole, um, so I think what you what you've written is is like really on point for us to just be able to think in new ways about this different set of of issues that we'll be facing, and that you know the one size doesn't fit all. You know, this is the solution of you know the the ceiling that Maker hit in terms of everything: governance, scalability, you know, risk. Um, but you know there's certainly a lot of risk that we're taking on by breaking everything up into little pieces and little specialized communities as well. So, you know, I think what you've presented are really important themes to, to begin to weave into our thinking and our understanding of, of how we're moving forward. Yeah, and that's that was pretty much the intention of just kind of looking at, you know, this is how, this is a way of looking at this uh, system. Like, let's open this conversation up, and you know, look at the dynamics and look at how do we 
you know what's a way to improve it what's a way to uh, what are ways to think through it um that's kind of the the broader you know the way it should be understood basically yeah all right guys i think we reached our our hmm. milestone <laughs> That was great. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. This was fun. This was fun. I liked it. I don't know what, what the rest of you think. Maybe maybe the rest of you are like, what the hell was that? You can do it uh, every single week. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah, we'll curious. I'm, I, I want an honest opinion out there. I don't know because... Oh, we'll, the, there you'll get you'll get plenty. Be careful what you wish for. You'll get plenty of honesty here. <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, you know, if if, if it was, it was like, I want like you know, uh, you know, maybe we have like a a survey, anonymous survey. I was curious. Hey, though. you know, go for it. I will absolutely never ask anyone for <laughs> their opinion on how I'm doing. <laughs> but you can go ahead, <laughs> and then um, it's it, and Robin, you know, you'll have your you'll have your moment in the fire. Um, but <laughs> there's no rush on that. No rush on that. But thank you. You know, it's just it's 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 really awesome um, to have both of you join uh, contributing through Acre Dow mm -hmm. the the refi ABC, and I think it's just super obvious. Uh, your expertise is in your perspectives and voice and and thinking and what you've already been contributing is just tremendous and so uh thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right, right guys, uh, don't want to don't want to keep week. you too long thank you so much kianga everyone else right. robin yeah cheers have a good one